Well, hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Jiu-Jitsu 2000 here today. I'm back. I hope you guys are doing fantastic out there. I've got an interesting video for you today. We're going to talk about an offering from Agui. This is a 60 watt solar panel. This is model ASP60W. This puts out between 18 and 20 volts, and I'm very excited to show you this panel. Now, let's get started right off the bat. The first thing that you'll notice is this is magnetic enclosure. So right here and right here, there are magnets, and it just stays shut. Very clean. I like that a lot. One thing that I noticed that I don't like and that I will fix is on the panel right here from shipment it comes with this plastic that will need to be removed so I don't know why they did that because it goes underneath the stitching but I'm gonna rip all this plastic off before I take this out and use it on the back here you can see there are barrel crow enclosures that gives this panel legs to stand up on and if there of course there's two legs there's one on each side so there's one here as well so very nice and then right here if we look at the front you'll see this little pouch and this pouch has a water resistant zipper so very nice this carries an IPX5 water resistant rating inside you'll see two USB A ports you'll see a USB C port and you'll also see the five and a half by 2.1 millimeter DC output Port. You'll see a red LED indicator as well that will tell you it'll illuminate when you're producing power. There is a little guide here. Let me open this bag and I'll show you this guide. Feel free to pause your screen if this is any anything that you might want to hang on to. This gives you all the specs and stuff like that of the panel. And then on the back it's just a little picture almost like a postcard. The cell type is monocrystalline. Solar cell efficiency is 22.8%. Maximum power current, 2.87 amps. Maximum power voltage, 20.9. Open circuit voltage, 24.7. That's pretty impressive. And short circuit current is 3.38 amps. This is an ETFE uh, solar panel type material underneath the plastic which is very nice. Working temperature is between minus 40 degrees centigrade to 80 degrees centigrade. And if you wanna convert that into Fahrenheit, that is minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, all the way up to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's very impressive. The folded dimensions is 440 millimeters by 530 millimeters by 30 millimeters. And if you wanna convert that into inches, that's 21 inches by 17 inches by about a half of an inch thick. Now the expanded dimensions is 880 millimeters by 530 millimeters by three millimeters thick. And if you again want to convert that into inches, we're looking at 34 and a half inches by 21 inches by about 0 0.2 inches in thickness. So very impressive. The weight is 2.3 kilograms and that is about 5.6 pounds. So very cool two year manufacturer warranty. The next thing that you see here is the five and a half by 2.1 millimeter to five and a half by 2.1. So this cord will plug into the port right here and then you can use any one of these 10 different adapters that is included with this solar panel. So we're gonna be probably using this one right here. This is our eight millimeter. This is gonna be used for almost all of our solar generators. They also include a five and a half by 2.1 millimeter to Anderson 
connector. So very cool. So right here you can see a closer look at the junction box and starting on the left you can see this port. This is a DC port. This is USB type C. There's the little LED indicator that will illuminate to let us know when we're producing energy. And then of course we have two smart auto detecting USB A ports. So you got port one and port two right there. Now the outputs that you'll get out of these ports, we're gonna start with USB port one. This will put out five volt, 3.4 amps, nine volt, two amps, or 12 volt, one and a half amp. And again, these two ports will auto detect based on whether they need to put out USB two power or USB three power. Now this second port puts out a little bit higher energy. So it's gonna put out five volt, 3.6, 6 amp, 9 volt, 2.5 amp, or 12 volt, 2 amp. So this is the one that I would suggest using. This one's a little bit hotter. Now if we look at the USB type C, this one puts out pretty good power too. It'll put out 5 volt at 3.6 amp, 9 volt at 5 amp, 12 volt at 5 amp or 20 volt at 5 amp and that's the maximum that it'll put out. Now the DC port will put out 5 volt at 3 amps. So as you can see here, we have two different sets of cables. This one has five and a half by 2.1 millimeter on each end. And this one has five and a half by 2.1 millimeter on this end and Anderson connector on the other end. So both of these can be plugged into this DC output port. Now if we use this one, we can also use any of these 10 different adapters because on the on the bottom here they're five and a half by 2.1 millimeter to whatever the top is. So depending on what device you need to power would determine which adapter you'll use. There's a lot of versatility here. So I think this one here is probably going to be the one that I'll be using to charge my solar generators. This is five and a half by 2.1 millimeter by eight millimeter. So I'll plug something like this together and this will go in here just like so and that's how I'll power my solar generators. We're just gonna zip this closed and you can see that it creates an IPX5 water resistant rating. So this would withstand splashing and stuff like that of water from any direction just the main thing when it comes to the water resistance of this panel is this junction box inside is not water resistant. Only when this port is closed, when these zippers are shut, does it give us that IPX5 rating. Now if we look at the panels themselves, these can withstand a little bit of water. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's good to put this out in the rain or anything like that, but they can withstand a little bit of water. I just love how these, how this enclosure has these magnets. I mean, it's fantastic. It, it just picks it up really nice. They stay together. It's, it's a bit, this thing is manufactured very well. I like it. Okay, so I am in the process of taking off this plastic. It's driving me bonkers. I want to expose the ETFE solar panels. Let's just get in there and pull this plastic off. I wish that they wouldn't have shipped it like this. Got most of the plastic off. So I'm happy about that. So here's the setup that I have going on right now. I am charging my X-Star and as you can see I'm getting 64 watts of input. That is impressive. Very good performance out of this solar panel. 63, 64 watts of input. I'm really enjoying that. Very impressive. 
And right now I'm charging off of the hood of my truck and I'm bringing in 58 watts of input, 59 watts. That's impressive out of a 60 watt panel. So I'm hoping you guys can see that. Hopefully you're seeing those numbers. 57 watts. 59 watts, that is very impressive out of a 60 watt panel. Now, some of you out there might be wondering, is it possible to take this solar panel and hook it up in a traditional sense? What I mean by that is, you know, deep cycle battery, charge controller, power inverter, things like that. The answer to that question is absolutely. Maybe you have a shed building or something like that and you have an empty wall facing the south. You can hang this thing up by these grommets and set up a semi-permanent situation and then because you've hung it on the side of a building maybe you put some screws in the building and then when the weather's good you can just leave it up there and then when the weather changes you can just disconnect very easily I'll show you how here in a second and then you can bring it in and then when the weather passes you could go put it back out now if it's something that you want to leave like a permanent situation you know let's not forget that these panels are only IPX5 water resistant so you don't want this to be something that you leave out there in the event of you know rain and stuff like that if that's something that you're wanting i would highly recommend getting a solid rigid solar panel so behind me you can see there is a deep cycle battery to get started you're going to need a couple of things you're going to need a, a small charge controller okay so once you get a charge controller you can pick these up 10 bucks, 20 bucks, very easy on Amazon. This is just pulse with modulation, very easy charge controller. Once you get that, what I'd recommend is getting some alligator uh, terminals so you can plug this into your battery with Anderson. Anderson is a very good connector and it works really good for making those connections. I'd also recommend getting some pigtails that are Anderson and installing them on your charge controller. So you'll have one of them ready to go to plug into the battery and the other one will be ready to go to plug into the solar panel. And then of course, if you want electricity, then I would suggest whichever power inverter you want, however much power you want, that's something that you can decide on. But let me go ahead and show you how simple it is to set this all up. So we're going to start by opening the side pouch on the solar panel. We're going to reach in and we're going to get the 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter to Anderson connector. This is the one we're going to want. So we'll disconnect that. We will plug this in to the DC port on the junction box. From here, I'm just going to close this pouch. I'm going to pull the legs out on my solar panel and I'm going to aim the panel to the sun and then I'll make those other connections. So let me take a quick look and see where the sun is. Something like that looks good. I'm looking up the sun. It's just right up there. So that looks good. So we've got our Anderson right here from the solar panel. We'll just keep that in mind for a second. We're going to take our alligators with our Anderson we're going to plug the negative into the negative terminal of the battery and the positive to the positive terminal of the battery. So now we have the battery connected to Anderson. From there, we're going to take our charge controller. Now, very important, you want to use these terminals, which would be this one right here. This one right here says the battery. That's going to follow right to here. We're going to plug that in to the battery. So right here. At this point, you'll see that the charge controller will come to life. Now that the charge controller is alive, you can take the other terminals which go to the solar panel. So we're going to take that Anderson and we'll connect it just like so. And at this point, we are now capable of charging this battery from this solar panel. From here, we will take the power inverter of our choice. We'll set it down. We will connect the negative terminal first, just like so. And then when you connect the positive, be prepared to see a small spark because you're gonna be charging the capacitors in the power inverter. So you'll see a little spark. 
And from here, the power inverter is now able to be turned on. And now you can plug in regular household type appliances and things that will run off of this power inverter. You can also charge your phone from this USB port and you can charge your phone from the USB ports on the charge controller as well. Let's not forget that the solar panel had excess USBs that we could use to charge our phone from there as well. So whether you're charging a GoPro, uh, your, your camera, your laptop, your phone, whatever the case might be. Okay, now that we have the whole system connected, you can scroll through the modes of the charge controller. This one supports lithium batteries, so that's the main screen. We're going to just kind of cycle through. What we're looking for is this screen right here. B01, B02, B03. B01 for this charge controller is a sealed battery, 02 is a gel battery, and 03 is a flooded battery. So this is a lead acid deep cycle battery, so I gotta make sure that I have 03. If I had a lithium, it would be 04, 05, 06, or 07. Now if you wanna change the interface or change the settings, you'll just hold this long press here on the menu button until the thing starts flashing and then up and down you could cycle through to whatever you want see those are all lithium that's the one we want that's gel and that's sealed so we're gonna go back up to three and then we'll just push and hold the menu button again until it stops flashing and we're set charge controller resets itself and as you can see we have solar power coming into the battery we also have a load terminal here if we want to turn the load terminal on and off which is these terminals right here we will just push and you'll see the little arrow will start flashing telling us that these load terminals are energized to turn them off we'll just push that button and then again if we want to charge any of our peripherals flashlights maybe our, our GoPros our phones it could be plugged in right here so this is a very simple way of getting power and using this panel in a traditional sense. And there's what it all looks like. It's very simple. Just walking right in front of it there. Our power inverter is energized and it's ready to be plugged in, whatever we want to plug into it. You can see that we're having 13 volts on our battery gives us a voltage reading 13.1 well my final thoughts on this solar panel are fantastic I'm gonna give it a big thumbs up I want to say thank you to Agui right off the bat for sending this panel out for review I love the ETFE uh, type material that they have on this panel I love the magnets I love the fact that it has grommets and the power to weight ratio that you get out of this panel is absolutely fantastic. Some of the larger panels that are like 100 watts or 120 watts on the market, they weigh like 10 pounds. So for the weight that this one comes in versus the amount of wattage input that you get that you saw in this video on my solar generator, it's just fantastic. I think this is really the sweet spot when it comes to solar panels. This thing is very lightweight. It's easy to deploy. It's got the legs on the back. One thing I wanna say about these charge controllers is you can find these anywhere on the internet. They're on eBay, they're on Amazon. And if you're having a battery that is lithium iron phosphate, um, like that charge controller will support lithium, but this one I don't think does. So if you're running a lithium battery, Make sure that when you're looking for these charge controllers that you find one that supports lithium because I don't think this one does. So with all that being said, folks, I'm really happy with the performance of this panel. I think it's fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave your comments down below, like this video, share this video, and until next time, have a beautiful day. We'll see you then. Bye for now.